position one, you can explain it or you can use diagrams. Uh, don't make this mistake of just using diagrams as an explanation. A diagram is also a good way to explain something, but if it's no English, explain what a diagram means, it's meaningless. Also try to avoid using the examples that were given in class. Sometimes that means if you, you, you put the example, but you don't understand what it means, you get it wrong. Um, this question in the uh, paper actually tells you to use the, the linked list cell example to uh, explain aliasing. Well, let's remember what aliasing means. And you should be familiar with these diagrams, we saw them a lot in the module. It's two variables referring to one object. Now if it's a cell object, it's got two fields inside it, the first and the next. And the first holds the data, and the next, as you know, refers to another cell object. And that's how we make a linked list. Okay, now let's look at an example here. Suppose first, suppose we've got a, a linked list of strings. Okay, so uh, we've got the first cell holds a reference to the machine hello. If we reassign, that variable, which I just had to buy. I need to prop that out. We see that not only V1 has changed, but V2 has changed because V2 alias is V1. That's what the question is asking you about, and that's the unexplained consequence if you weren't aware that because it's alias, changing V1 internal. Structure of V1 changes V2, that could have a surprising effect. In answering the exam, you just need to state that clearly and simply, possibly using this sort of diagram. That's all that's being asked for. Well, I've reviewed my question one. Of course, this was a written question, so I haven't given a full answer to it, or I've given a diagram answer to it. One thing I thought, looking at it, some people may be confused because of the different cells and pointers diagrams we've used. So I'll just go over that separate point now. So in my answer here, I gave diagrams in this form. So this is the conventional representation of objects that I've used, a sort of blob or a circle or with squares inside which represent the variables. So that's how we've represented objects, with the idea that the variable is inside the object and only the object itself can touch the variable. Now, later on, module we saw this sort of representation So you also have seen this, and there are questions which use this representation. It's important to know that this is just a simplified. This is just a simplified form of, of this. So the two variables first and next are now shown as two boxes joined together into a bigger box. But it's not different from this. One way reason for doing this is because these are not private variables; so other code can, can access them. Uh, I've noticed many people when doing these cells and points diagrams don't really seem to know what they mean. So I see things like this. The arrow floating about in between the two boxes. This box represents an object. An arrow represents a variable referring to a cell. This arrow here is this arrow here from the next 
to the whole object. The whole object is the whole box. So there was inside it are the two boxes joined together. You must show the arrow like that, not floating in the air. Um, important to understand this is a shorthand diagram of this form. Two boxes, the first and next, joined together. The first on the left and the next on the right. So an arrow must come from a small box representing the variable and point to a, a, a big box representing the whole object. And when you draw these diagrams in this form, you must indicate it like this, not with arrows floating or floating around if you don't quite know where they come from. And, of course, the other thing I sometimes see, things like this, two arrows. Now, a variable can't refer to two things at the same time, so an arrow cannot possibly point to two to kind of two, kind of two arrows coming from a box going somewhere else. The other thing I quite often see is something like this. Let's suppose this is LS1 and this is LS2. And then we say LS2 equals LS1. So we know that LS2 starts referring to what LS1 refers to. What is, we should do it, LS2 is set to refer to the same thing that LS1 refers to. This. It's not often, very often see this mistake made. That's wrong. It's not, and a variable doesn't refer to another variable, it refers to the same object that that variable refers to. Okay, so just, that's just to clarify um, some aspects of um, cells and pointers diagrams.